Hi guys, welcome to Drumdog and welcome to another lesson. Today we are going to be talking about open-handed playing. Now for those of you who don't know, open-handed playing is simply the opposite to this regular crossover when we're playing our right hand on the hi-hat and our left hand on the snare. Now the term comes from where we're opening those hands up to play the left hand on the hi-hat and the right hand on the snare. Now you've probably seen a couple drummers play this way, but it is a completely different way of thinking purely because we're changing round the rolls of our two hands while we're playing beats. Now whether you have intentions to switch to open-handed playing for all of your playing or just to study it for a little bit, there are massive benefits for everyone to learn playing this way even if you intend to carry on playing with a normal crossover. It brings massive benefits to our weaker hand as it takes the role of the main timekeeper and can give us way more dynamic control in our right hand as we learn to control a strong backbeat and nice quiet ghost notes. Today we're looking at three open-handed beats that gradually increase in difficulty. So kicking off here with beat number one, we got a little funk beat which sounds like this. Now to warm things up here, for this beat our left hand is just playing happy 8th notes up on that hi-hat there. Now even though it's just 8th notes, this is going to feel really alien if you've never played open handed before, so it's worth taking the time just to get used to this left hand playing those 8th notes and make sure it's not getting too tense and gripping that stick too tight. Keep that hand relaxed and let the weight of the stick fall into that hi-hat. Now where this beat gets a little bit more challenging is where we're adding in the ghost notes in our now right hand. We've got a couple little 16th off beats which are happy enough but then on the E and of three we've got two little ghost notes in a row, the first one on its own on an off beat and the second one falling on top of that hi-hat. So let's take a second just to play that hat and snare pattern together, make sure that the off beats on the snare are falling dead in between the hats and the notes in unison are falling dead on top. Let's get those hands working together. Now once we've got that hand pattern feeling nice and comfortable, let's drop in that bass drum and bring that full beat back. Now for our second beat here, we're going to be stepping away from a regular pattern in that left hand as we look at a variation on the Latin beat Naningo. Now this is a beat that we've covered very recently in our three Latin grooves lesson so I recommend you go and check that guy out as I'm not going to be going over the fundamentals of that groove again in this lesson, link in the description. Now for this Naningo beat our left hand is going to be playing up on a ride cymbal or the top of a crash cymbal on the left of the kit and we're going to be playing this familiar pattern. One, two, three, four, five, six. Let's take a second to familiarise on that cymbal pattern with the bass drum holding down the pulse. So 
So as we know, the other part of the Nanningo falls in the right hand as we're playing across the snare, tom one and the floor tom. So likewise, let's check out that right hand pattern with the feet playing the pulse. Now where this Naningo really brings in its most challenging part is where we bring these two hand patterns together. So let's take out the feet for a moment and just focus on these patterns working together and like with the first beat, make sure where they're playing in unison they fall dead on top of each other but where they're playing around each other make sure those notes are sitting dead in the middle and we're not getting any flamming or the notes bunching up to one way or the other. Now do take your time with this guy. This beat is challenging enough when we're playing it right lead, let alone when we're flipping that round. So that is gonna take a second before that feels natural and like it's grooving on the kit. Once we've got it feeling comfortable, let's add in those feet once again to get this full beat. Now for our third and final beat for this lesson, we're gonna be coming back to a 4-4 funk territory, but this time we're ramping up the difficulty by playing a broken 16th hat pattern with our left hand. Now let's check out that pattern on its own first because this will take a second to get that feeling comfortable and not too tense. We're looking at a one and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four. Now to bring this pattern up to speed, we really wanna be involving the wrist here. We don't wanna be playing that entire pattern just from the elbow because that's gonna generate a lot of work. We've really got to loosen up that wrist and then only drop the arm in for that last hit there. So first things first, let's take that hat pattern and our bass drum groove to the kit. Now once we've got that down and relaxed, our next challenge with this beat comes to our ghost note pattern in the right hand. Now this time we've got a couple double ghost notes with one coming straight after our back beat. Now this ghost note pattern does tie itself in really nicely with our broken 16th hat pattern. So we are gonna have to focus on learning these two together. And as with the other one, make sure our two hands are working together, playing in unison when they need to and working around each other smoothly when they should be.
Now with this one, I really do recommend taking the time to get that to feel comfortable. Because at first, it's super challenging to not make those broken sixteenths on the hat with the ghost notes sound lumpy. We want the whole thing to sound like a constant smooth stream of sixteenths. One e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a. But even though each pattern is broken, that stream of sixteenths we create should still sound as smooth as that. Once it's sounding smooth, the only thing left to add is our bass drum pattern again. Now across those three grooves there, it really gives both of these hands a real workout in their new roles, whether they're the timekeeper or the new backbeat and ghost note player. But the true way to tell if we've got these beats down and got them feeling as comfortable as our regular cross-handed playing is to put them head to head with their cross-handed versions. So in this final little workout for each of these grooves, we're gonna be playing a loop between playing our beat leading with our strong hand and then playing our beat open-handed. You wanna make this transition as smooth as possible and we wanna jump straight from one beat into the other one without finding a hiccup. Now, as I mentioned at the beginning, open-handed playing offers massive benefits to everyone, even if you intend to play open-handed all the time or not. It just keeps both of our hands being more aware of what the other hand is doing, and as well as having the dexterity and dynamic capabilities to play anything we ask of them. Now, I really hope you guys have enjoyed this lesson and that you enjoy playing these open-handed beats as much as I do. If you're interested in more lessons and full-length lesson packs, don't forget to check out our website, drum.dog and we'll see you again soon. So kicking off here with beat number one, we got a little funk beat which sounds like this. <laughs> yeah, if Donald Duck played the drums, that would be what it was. 